When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, for thousands of appetizing ingredients that inspire countless mouth-watering meals. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week, and up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with points. So you can get big flavors and big savings. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. There's no better feeling than a personal win. And the State Farm Personal Price Plan can help you do just that. Talk to a State Farm agent today to learn how you can bundle and save with the personal price plan. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices are based on rating plans that vary by state. Coverage options are selected by the customer. Availability, amount of discounts and savings, and eligibility vary by state. And now, live from the TCL Broadcast Studios, it's Joe Suchere and Patrick Royce with Sports Talk. You think Dustin won that Canadian Open for the old Gretzky? Yeah, they all treat him like a hometown boy. And apparently at the Pro-Am on Wednesday, he wore a Gretzky jersey to oh. kind of push that along. i tell you what, though. Personality, wall. Oh, Isn't he? He's, he's the most... He's un, he is the most phlegmatic golfer I've ever seen. Yeah, he got that nasal way to look. We yeah. always like him. Yeah. Because he seems like a nice enough fellow, hell of a player, and, uh, and uh, oh, he's a fantastic player when he's uh, when he's rolling it, man. He, oh, the thing he hit that. How far did he hit that nine iron? Did you see that? I don't. Had I, to be two twenty out of the grass. You I can't mean, hit, hit a nine the, iron that far. Whatever the hell he hit, and then he hit a pitching. He hits clubs twenty yards further than anybody hits them. Mm-hmm. And he then he get he's got that little carb that he hits a little fade and no a little fade of about three twenty, mm-hmm. uh, but it's it's it, there's there's so much game there man that's that's nineteen wins, he's still what thirty two three mm-hmm. he's got he got another fifteen in him doesn't he uh, World Golf Championships this weekend yes the Bridgestone and then the PGA next week and this is a busy schedule the Canadian Open got a hell of a field considering. The British, considering it's a month of these yeah. tournaments that yeah. are fantastic. So, uh, meanwhile, the 3M starts this week up there, and uh, uh, Miguel Hanhel won in Britain, but he's not coming, and Bernie's not here this year. Bernie Bernhard's not coming; he's usually here. Uh, Did Angel Cabrera win the British Senior? Uh, no, no, no. Miguel Angel Jimenez won oh, yeah. the British Senior. Okay. Uh, Cabrera's not a senior yet. Okay, but. Uh, uh, this is the last ever, and Jack and Trevino are showing up to play Saturday again. The last time the greats of golf, and then this is it's going to be steamy up there this weekend. Huh? Yeah, the hot and humid stuff's returning. Yes, but they get good crowds for that three. Yeah, they'll, they'll, Saturday's uh, crowds have been real good. The people people like to see Jack, and this will be the last time because you know next year it changes. Next year you have the Wednesday pro am, and you only have one day of pro am when you get the regular event, and that's. Uh, Next year, and then you got you'll see what we end up with for a field on the first week of July. So, did you see any of the Hall of Fame induction speeches? Yeah, I watched uh, quite a bit of it. I I listened to Jack and listened to Tommy, and uh, went on quite a while. When you got six inductees, it yep. can take a while. And the eight minute uh, time rule did not quite uh, stand it. Jack had to go at least twenty. Really? Yeah, had to go twenty. Thanked everybody ever uh, ever played with, and he came out and said, screamed out, "Hello, Cooperstown!" And he admitted afterwards it was extremely corny, but he did that to keep himself from getting them. He wanted to let out something mm-hmm. to keep himself from getting all choked up when he, would he have first been a, started talking. Was it a hot, so. steamy day in Cooperstown? No, it was a gorgeous day. Oh. It was uh, kind of like here yesterday. It was eighty, and they they weren't they weren't suffering as usual. Had their second biggest crowd ever, probably just because of the number of people that were in, getting in. Uh, Detroit people, a lot of Detroit people because of the Trammell and Morris, and then uh, you know they had they had five different teams represented. So well, Jack went in as a Tiger, didn't he? Oh, of course, God, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. That was his. I mean, there's he 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 came and pitched here in '91, and then he pitched two years in Toronto, and then he pitched a little bit in Cleveland in '94, but. 
He was a Tiger. Mm -hmm. 14 years. Not uh, 77 and 78 weren't full seasons, but then after that, 12 seasons. More wins in the 80s than anybody. So mm -hmm. pretty, uh, pretty dang good. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad to see him get in. And the, the St. Paul uh, angle certainly was strong. Now, I got a question for you. All right. You, uh, I finally watched last night on DVR the Ted Williams okay. American Masters. Uh -huh. You watched it closely. Yeah. When he was at the batting cage at the 1969 All-Star Game at the 17-minute mark, did you see who had the tape recorder in front of him? No, I missed it. Was it Sid? Sid Hartman for two seconds. Sid's got the tape recorder. Right. And I'll be damned. I think it's the same tape recorder oh, yeah. that he retired <laughs> uh, like several months ago. He's now got the two gals that are with him, all yeah. the, one or the other with him, and they now record it on the cell phone so he doesn't have to lug the, that tape recorder around. But the microphone that he was holding there, and it's two, it's two seconds, was uh, looked identical. I'll looked identical to that monstrous tape recorder that he was still carrying around, uh, you know, until, until he got in the walker anyway. Now uh, he's got a guy in there, Jeff Day, who's been his... His, Helper. Girl, his guy for eight eight years probably and Jeff Jeff finds notes to put on the side and he types up all the tape. Yeah. But Sid can move copy. He can you know, he's got he can move copy and yeah. out of the tape that he wants here and then somebody edits the hell out of it. But he still uh and he types some paragraphs uh, once in a while. You can see when he's uh, he's decided to express like he was the other day. He was trying to write about Morris and Winfield and and uh, and Molitor and and he kind of included Jack in how he went over and he's known them since they were high school kids. Mm -hmm. Well, he hadn't known Jack Morris since he was a high school kid because Jack Morris was a complete non-entity at Highland Park High School. Right. He was a he was a. a Pretty good infielder and a, a wild ass pitcher. His brother Tommy was the guy with the reputation over there. So, uh, and then he went out to Brigham Young and started. He he always had the great arm and he kind of reined in that control and he became a good pitcher out of Brigham Young and ended up getting drafted by the Tigers. And hell, I think he got drafted in seventy six and he was in the big leagues for a while in seventy seven. He he got there almost immediately. The boys went four and six on a road trip. Are you excited to have they, them home? They stink. Uh huh. They're just uh, with stinks. They, they just. I mean, they're dead now after the after the trades. They 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 know that nobody's. You you mean to tell me that for Escobar? Yes. All you could get was some prospects. Three minor, three class A guys, and they're the guy. Up. He's leading the league in doubles, isn't he? Escobar. Yeah. And the first thing he did when he got to uh, Arizona was hit a double, hit another double. So. By today's standards, mm -hmm. that's a marquee player. Well, it's a it's a it's, it's a, a good very player. good player, and, and you're uh, getting three unknowns. Yes, guys who probably have oh. a twenty five percent chance of playing in the big leagues because they're all something? A ballers. What was the but, thinking here? Well, we're trying to punch up the farm system. We're trying to get get more personnel, and they're they're bragging about the five guys they got for Presley and. Escobar, but they're all there's not the ooh wow mm -hmm. surefire guy in the in the group in the fivesome. Well, you they just, all got a chance, but they're all class A. I mean, that's a long journey from low class A to the big leagues. Well, with all of August left and all of mm -hmm. September left, you've essentially said, "See you next year." Yeah, and yeah, to the I fans, disagree to the customers. They're gonna have their uh, they're gonna go under two million, and they can, they won't even be able to pad it to get, to hit two million this year, and it's gonna probably be the lowest attendance in uh, the last you know seven eight years at the Metrodome. They drew pretty well. It's uh, this will be their lowest attendance in years. Well, it'll certainly be the lowest since they moved outdoors. Oh, oh, heavens, yes, but yeah. uh, but I'd, I'd have to go back and look. But they uh, they haven't they they drew pretty well. You know, they were winning in the last decade in the Metrodome. Mm -hmm. So they had, they drew pretty well in there. So, yeah, I mean, they're basically, they've announced to the fans that, uh, you know, come if you want to, but uh, we don't have any plans for this season. So. Oh, that's just, just that's disheartening. Mm -hmm. But yeah. they're not. At least good. keep up the delusion. Yes, yes. Is this and, where people start giving away their 
uh, Twins season tickets. Where well, please uh, go, you can please, get them pretty easy. Please. Supposedly, the Twins now have a deal where you can cash in your season tickets. You don't have to eat any, but you still have to go through the motion. All, you do, of, all right. this do is gives <laughs> all this does is give you more tickets for another game to right. get rid of in September. <laughs> so I, I don't know. It's. Uh, yeah, it's it's been a uh, very disgusting season because there were hopes coming in, and now the new skinny Miguel. I don't think he's got a hit yet, right? The uh, hmm. first time out, I think too skinny. He, he struck out three times in four at bats, and then uh, yesterday, I don't think he got a hit either. Who's pitching tonight, Mister Hurt Finger? Uh, yeah, Irv. Irv's yeah. pitching. Irv's pitching. Irv's pitching. Uh, Irv's just a pitching. moment. Hey, Chipper. No, not you. <laughs> he's in. Chipper's in. that WNBA All-Star game? Uh, well, I got to make a confession. I did not see any of it because I, on Saturday, drove down to Mankato to see uh, what was happening without the Vikings being there. This was the first day of full workouts, and I did not uh, see any of that uh, because uh, one reason being... I hit quite the roadblock on Highway 169. It's a kind of a good thing the Vikings aren't in Mankato this year. We had a fire truck across the road outside of Jordan to keep... It was one lane, but they must have apparently decided they didn't want people even using that one lane, so they sent you off on this detour, which led to nowhere. Was it a detour? A detour. Yes, it was German. It was a, it's a detour. It was a detour. Yeah. It was a detour is what it was. Because <laughs> we ended up on this gravel road, and it had to be backed up. I don't know what was happening out on 169. It's a crash. But it had to be backed up for an hour. Yeah. Trying to get... Did you did you see that? No, but that's it's been happening frequently. They have crashes in that construction zone down by Jordan, and they have no choice but to shut it down. And and what happens is exactly what you're explaining. Yeah, the, yeah they sent you yeah. around, and it it turns out being a gravel road during the into the woods. But they must have had us coming out on the same side where the crash was still so, there because nobody was moving. So before you even brought this up, I was wondering. When the thought occurred to you, did it occur to you then, or did you get all the way down to Mankato when the thought occurred to you? To what? What the f- what? What the hell am I, I doing? Oh no, <laughs> it was great. I thought it was what, a good what the thing. hell kind of decision was this? <laughs> Here's the bad decision I made. I knew I was going to go talk to Johnny B because he's got the bar right across okay. the street to all see right. how business was, and I knew I was going to go talk to Jake Stadium Pizza. And what's the other stop you got to make if the Vikings aren't here? I, I've never done Mankato. Mattler's, the the strip joint. Oh, you know? yeah, the gentlemen's which, club. The gentlemen's club, which yeah. used to I was be a big, the candy store big on handout for the Vikings. <laughs> well, I got there at four o'clock. The girls weren't even there yet. There was just three guys at the bar waiting. What can I get you, pal? Waiting. But I'll I show you mine. <laughs> I had a couple of good quotes. The guy Moose Moss, M A E S, owns it. The family's. The family's been there for 1903, but they didn't start dancing until 1966. Please welcome to the stage. Which uh, is also, by coincidence, the year the Vikings showed up. So that might have been related. Huh. Right? I'm still hung up on the part where you said you had to drive on a gravel road through the woods. Into the woods. Yes. Into the woods. Yeah. Into the woods. Were you in a national forest? It sounds it's like heaven to me. Woods down there. And then, but down there. But they, <laughs> nobody was there telling you, hey, we're stopped there too. It was, <laughs> I was in a line for 15 minutes and nobody was moving. Oh, that would have irritated me. Yeah. Oh. So I turned around, went out. Anyway, Mettlers. Mettlers. 1903. As they a, opened it. But it was No, 66. They started, uh, uh, getting female entertainment. Well, what was old three to sixty six? Ah, restaurant oh. bar, restaurant barbershop bar, quartet, restaurant <laughs> bar, uh, and the gal uh, Jan behind the bar. She's been there behind the bar forever. The bartender. She gave me some good stuff on various Vikings who'd been there through the years, and of Ooh. course, in two thousand eighteen, 
I'm not printing their names, right? Yeah. Right. Right. I'm not printing their names. But it's funny, the, the, the strip club coincided with the arrival of the Vikings. Yes, I don't that think it was a coincidence. Right. I asked Moose, and he said, I'm not sure, but that's probably what it was. Yeah. Yeah. I've always been curious, especially in your case alone. Do you stroll into a place like that and tell them? Who you are? Do they figure yes. it out on your own? No, on their I, own? I go in and tell them. Who okay, I am, yeah. you write for the Star Tribune. Yes. And, okay, and, but uh, they, <laughs> the guy told me the the Moose's quote was, "Yeah, we can used to get players in here all the time, and then the, and then that ship sailed." Mm-hmm. And I said, "What ship?" He said, "The Love Boat." <laughs> he said, yeah. "He said ever since then, obviously these guys have been told when they get to Winter Park." I remember when they get to training camp, don't go to Mettler's and get have people see you around yeah. dancers. So yeah. anyway. So. Oh, did you discover that it has been a financial hit to the city? Oh, terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, they. I don't know how many millions they figured. They figured it was six, eight million dollars. Goodness. Wow. You know, in, in two and a half weeks. Well, Johnny B's had... Johnny B and one of his wait and one of his bartenders were sitting at the bar, and there was maybe four customers in there at one o'clock. And between sessions of Viking practices, they would add three hundred people in there fighting to get I beer suppose. and sandwiches. Yeah. So yeah, yep. See, it's been a big hit. Hit, and uh, I talked to the football coach, the Mankato State football coach, too. He said there's a he said there's a emptiness in the whole town. It's <laughs> just kind of a feeling of. They had a good you know, run. Did, did they start 52 there? Years. No, Bemidji, 61 oh, okay. through Rookie, 65. that's what you say about somebody who's 98 and just passed away. Oh, yeah. Had, had a, a good run. run. That yeah. wasn't a that long was, enough run. So you're talking about Sid, but he has no ten, intention of passing <laughs> Sid's away. had a pretty good run. Hey, going back to Jack for a second, I was listening to you guys talk about it, and I've listened to a few discussions about this. Did, I don't think Jack shed a tear, did he? No, caught his voice caught a couple of times, but he said that the reason he shouted hello because, Cooperstown yeah, was yeah. the... To maybe let out a little of the emotion of the thing, so <laughs> which did not seem very Jack like at all. Yeah, no, uh, that's not like Mister Happiness. But, but he, you know, that's been a perfect. That's a perfect description of him for the last few years. He's kind of a changed guy. Yeah, he he's still grumpier than hell. Did he say anything like this? So she chose it baseball <laughs> for me. Did Ricky he say, was there. Did he say anything like this? I guess Mom do knows best. <laughs> Not with that Highland Park education. Not with that good me? Highland Park education. No, no. Yeah, that was a that was a huge group, man. Six players. Uh, and did I hear one of you say that nobody won more ball games in the eighties? Eighties, yeah. He was. Yeah. He won more games in the eighties. Fantastic! Yes. Wow. Yes. Quite a St. Paul contingent, that's for sure. And damn near the same neighborhood. Yeah, uh, I think two miles apart mm-hmm. was uh, the longest distance. I mean, Molly and Winnie lived real close together. Uh, Mauer, Mauer's Hall of Fame inevitability is no longer no, an inevitability. he's not going to make it. Yeah. But that would have been the fourth guy from the same yes, neighborhood. Yeah, he's not going to make it. But these guys were the same generation, 70s. Yeah. Well, so. speaking of that, are there any other players from that hood that didn't make it? Oh, I'm sure there are. I can't. Matthew, uh, did you grow up in that neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> I did, but I played left out. I was, uh, yeah. I well, you know, Joe, Joe and Winnie played at the same playground, Oxford. Yeah. yeah. Sports talk. I, would I was be kept back. on the B squad, and um, <laughs> and I was told by uh, that was uh, Mauer or Denning, whoever. You're not really here for um, your baseball. You just keep the team loose, okay? <laughs> keep the team loose. Do your impressions and stuff. And that's... Make quips. Yeah. <laughs> Sports Talk will be back shortly, but now thanks to our good friends in Owatonna, Minnesota, at Federated Insurance, where it's their business to protect your business, and nobody does that better than Federated. It's Bruce Vale from the Wall Street Journal and what's left of your money. Well, a little bit left today. Uh, stocks were lower at the market close. The tech sector again weighed on the broader market. Third straight day that's happened. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 144 points, closing at 25,306. The Nasdaq Composite lost 107 points, and the S&P 500 dropped 16. There's some new research casting doubt on whether ride-hailing services like Uber and Lyft are helping ease traffic congestion. While some people are foregoing buying a 
new car and using these services to get around, it's not a common choice. A new Reuters survey shows only 9% of people who sold or traded in a vehicle over the past year decided not to get a new car and instead use ride-sharing services. And other research suggests that Uber and Lyft might instead be putting more cars on the road and dissuading people from using public transportation. A Canadian man legally changed his gender to female so he could get better car insurance rates. The man from Alberta, identified only by CBC News as David, said he was quoted at $4,500 Canadian dollars to insure the Chevy Cruze he wanted to buy. The insurers told him his yearly bill would be about 1100 bucks less if he were a woman. So he changed his birth certificate and his driver's license to get a better rate. Bet Geico won't do that for you. I'm Bruce Vale with your money now on 1500 ESPN. Now, wait a second, Bruce. Now, he didn't change his sex. He just changed his just legal. Just changed his legal gender, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I'm wearing a hell of a, a cute pair of a thong right now. That's well, just, it's go just on down to the DMV, see what that'll get you. Did you ever find Bugs Bunny attractive when he'd put on a dress and play a girl bunny? Sure. Who didn't? All right, we'll let you go, Bruce. Your uh, traffic here is sponsored by your locally owned Domino's 94. Before we get to Reavers, did you see this thing from Collar today? It was great. What? He's walking into Viking practice behind Victor the Viking. Oh, the, the big mascot? mascot. And the security guard won't let him in. He wants the security. Well, we were security, just talking about the, overzealous the security, security in here. The guard says, you can't come in. You can't come in here. Does that sound guys. familiar, Rook? And, and of course, yes. and of I had to park on the street. Of course, Victor the Viking's not supposed to speak. No, he just right? has to he give the shoulder shrug. Did he, yeah, did he go like this? And he turned it around and <laughs> Collar said, Collar said this morning, he said, you should have seen the look on his face. He said, oh, well, wait a minute. The look on his face never changes. Right. <laughs> Why the, the hell is the mascot going to a practice? Yeah, because he's entertaining. He's got to interact with the fans. fans. Oh. Who are so damn far away out at the new place uh if, if you don't pay the 20 bucks apparently you're and you're like surly brewery to here as is far that as stefan diggs no that's just uh, some no. other guy yeah by the way there's no people there and they say they're having five thousand every time i see a crowd shot there's no crowd mm. did, did the security guard threaten to tow him away i don't yeah, know right. what he was gonna do they finally get some viking employee came over and said hey hey let him in what the hell's wrong he's not with trying you? to sneak My God. in, in this he's made of foam costume. let him in <laughs> these nine dollar per hour security guards i'm oh, telling you i guess wow. they're really tough out there <laughs> they're <laughs> there was a great photo of the the still inflatable uh, big Viking mascot because it looks like he's you know he's given the number one uh, hey what but it looks like he's given the middle digit oh, yeah. <laughs> well they only have what four fingers right. the cartoon yeah, mascots right. yeah you can take your choice did they haul over the Viking boat to the new place uh, I think so I don't know Gotta have the boat. I haven't been out there I don't know. Are you not boycotting like uh, no, you did for US I mean, Bank just, Stadium? I haven't even gone through the credential process. I don't know where you park. I don't know anything. I, <laughs> but I know how to get to Mankato. I, yep. to, I texted. Gravel rolled through I the woods. tweeted out, by the way, when I was stuck <laughs> in traffic, to all Viking fans headed down to Mankato for the afternoon workout. You know, look out. Right, traffic's right. You got some traffic. And of course, hey, idiot, they're not practicing yet so anymore. Fish Thank off. you. Fish Our off. people just. You, uh, Thank you. You know, Royce, you had Jesus. mentioned Mettler's. Uh, there's one member of this uh, hour show that has been thrown out of that establishment. <laughs> By his own roommate, who was a security <laughs> guard at that particular spot. Yeah. Really? Several years Let's ago. Let's not name yes. this person. No, yes. we won't do that. Do you think that you might get to some news, Chris? After winning the opening game Thursday, the Twins dropped the final three to the Red Sox in Boston over the weekend. Yesterday, it was a 3 to nothing shutout loss. Jose Barrios didn't make it out of the fifth inning. Newly acquired Boston starter Nathan Eovaldi went seven, allowing just four hits and striking out five. How about this stat? The Red Sox are now at... 41 games over 500 at 74 and 33 and they Probably have a f- the best record in franchise history at that it point. is it is yes and they have a five and a half game lead over the yankees who have baseball's second best record at 67 and 37 what did i tell you thursday afternoon boy you said a lot of stuff thursday afternoon i said we'll take one I said, we'll settle for one. Oh, I, yes, you did. They almost had two if Fernando said, hadn't blown yeah, it Friday said, night. We'll settle for one. Uh, the Twins return home to host first place. Cleveland, Irv Santana will start against Shane Bieber. First pitch is at 7-10 from Target Field. Chris, I have a question. Yes, sir. 
When's John going to be back? <laughs> Wednesday, and it can't come fast enough. Yeah, you got that right. Rookie, I forgot to mention I'm going to need that Boy, same song. So you're going to have a whole new appreciation for height. Huh? I love working with John. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I well, really despite miss... Despite all well, the it's ridicule because, you give him. Because, Pat, he comes by the cube that Johnny prepares, yeah. thinking John's still there hurling music insults at yeah, me yeah. and I don't react. He goes, well, this isn't any fun. I, I love walking by and dropping a bomb and John will go, wait a minute, and he'll chase me down the hall. And he gets fished in it's every single time. Does John well, it's so fun. Come and bother you or is he going to leave you alone? He just walks and says, oh, it's Reavers. <laughs> and he walks away. Uh, the Baseball Hall of Fame class of 2018 was inducted yesterday in Cooperstown. As you guys mentioned, 91 World Series MVP Jack Morris was one of the six members inducted. 1991, I had a chance to go back to Minnesota and complete the dream I had as a young boy. It would be a dream come true to follow in the footsteps of my heroes, Armin Killebrew, Bob Allison, Tony Oliva, Jim Cott, and Rod Carew. I knew the Twins had a talented group of ball players, and free agency worked very well for me that year. The team chemistry was special, and every day I couldn't wait to get to the ballpark to see what was going to unfold. I guess mom <laughs> do knows best. Uh, former <laughs> twin Jim Tomey, along with Vlad Guerrero, Alan Trammell, Trevor Hoffman, and Chipper Jones made up the rest of the 2018 class. How many games did they win in 90? It wasn't like 87. 95 they... wins, I believe. 95 okay. or 94, I can't So remember. that was legit. It wasn't like their 87 wins. Oh, they were a good team that year. Uh, no, news notes from today. No charges will be filed against two Minneapolis police officers who fatally shot and armed Thurman Blevins during a foot chase last month in a residential neighborhood. Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman announced today witness testimony, body camera video, and forensic testing all proved that Blevins had a 9 millimeter semi-automatic handgun in his hand and refused multiple commands to drop the gun during the foot chase that ended in his death on June 23rd, Freeman said in a statement. Freeman earlier today attempted to appear at a news conference to make the announcement but was interrupted by protesters and family who took over the room to decry the man's death. Freeman was about two minutes into the news Did conference. Did they have media credentials, the protesters, no. or do we let them in? I think they're allowed in. They're allowed in. I think that needs to stop, though. If you want to have a press conference, yeah, you will get your coverage. You don't need to and shout down the You know where attorney. this started? With Tim Brewster. When they introduced Tim Brewster, they let the public in. And all press conferences have gone to hell since then. I did not know that. Press conference for media only. Stay out! Yeah, I could. Whether agree. you're You'd introducing a, a new guard. coach, yep. new coach or out, keep the civilians out of the room and the mascots. Victor, the mascot. out. <laughs> We're gonna tow your car, right? Yes, <laughs> Brewster, they right over there. Back that was there. the beginning of the got end, me huh? off to a bad start, right? Oh, well, with Coach Brew because they were eating, gobbling up his BS, and got me irritated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> About ten thousand more people were ordered evacuated as two wildfires moved towards small lake towns in northern California, while the state's largest and deadliest blaze of the year slowed slightly after days of growth, according to authorities. How's the rain forecast? We getting any? I, Statistically, not until next Tuesday, yeah. a oh, week from tomorrow. Okay. The twin fires in Mendocino and Lake Counties flared up late Sunday, forcing the new evacuations from the 4,700 resident town of Lakeport and the other communities near Clear Lake, about 120 miles north of San Francisco. The fires have so far destroyed six homes and threatened 10,000 others. Uh, The flames have blackened 87 square miles with minimal containment. Those fires were among 17 burning across the state, where fire crews were stretched to the limit. To the north, near Redding, California, where an unprecedented blaze killed six people. Uh, one of those was a, a, a wife and uh, and a great-grandmother to two children that were among the dead. And uh, that woman's husband was uh, interviewed by CBS News saying he didn't know. It's tough to watch. That he, his, gets a te- he gets a text from him saying, got to come back and get us. We're trapped. Mm-hmm. He couldn't get back. He couldn't get wow. back. Oh, my. It's, oh. Uh, it's heartbreaking. As that's, Joe mentioned earlier, absolutely heartbreaking. You know, that state's a great state with an incredible... Uh, Natural resources, but you got to pick your spots when you're building houses. Yeah. President Donald Trump says, says that he is willing to shut down the government over funding for his long promised border wall, but that he'll always leave room for negotiation. Trump was asked you about know, his- why doesn't he? He got 25. 25- He's got money. Why doesn't he build it? I don't think he can cover the 25 bill. <laughs> well, get a cheap 
Get a get loan. Some, get some cheap help yeah. from uh, non-residents. No, no, you know? no. You just do Aliens. the Trump wall and hotel. You know, just kind of double whammy. <laughs> Trump was asked about his shutdown threat. Make it wide enough so it is a hotel. <laughs> yes. That's a brilliant idea. Uh-huh. He says, I'll always leave room for negotiation, but he's stressing the need for border security and overhauling the nation's legal immigration system. Won't be good for the uh, won't be good for the uh, booming economy if he shuts down the government. A collision involving two dirt bike motorcycles on a state forest trail in northern Minnesota left one of the riders dead. The crash occurred uh, Friday evening near Pine River on the Bull Moose Trail in the Foothills State Forest, according to Cass County Sheriff's Office. Jackson Snadyrich of Minneapolis did not survive the collision. The other rider, Bo Percy of Rice, Minnesota, escaped injury. Uh, the man had been heading north on the trail, rounding a corner, and he was sliding as he hit Piercy coming the other way. According to the sheriff's office, both riders were wearing helmets. Was it a two-way trail, Chris? That I couldn't tell, uh, Kenny. I read two different accounts of this, and I, I was trying to locate where the place even is. Yeah. But I don't know if it was a two-way trail or not. I, I came back, when I came back from Mankato, I took 13 out of town because there's 60 and then 13 out of town because I couldn't stand 169 again. And uh, I went through that Waterville Elysian area. Yeah. Man, there's some my, nice, my neck of the woods. Nice yes. lakes down there. Absolutely. And, yeah. and uh, they got trails all over the place, riding trails. What color thing. were the lakes? Good. They look good. Warm coffee colors? Nice and blue. Mm-hmm. All right, just a moment. Come on. Text. The announcement has been made. <laughs> See you Thursday, fellas. <laughs> a Texas inmate took a wild ride after breaking the window of a patrol car and climbing onto its roof as it sped down the highway. Video of the incident was recorded by people driving behind the parole, patrol car Excuse me, that was transporting 31-year-old Martin Estrada. Sheriff's officials say at some point during the drive, Estrada slipped out of his handcuffs shattered the passenger side window and climbed atop the patrol car. (laughs) The deputy who was driving summoned help and didn't stop until other officers arrived. The office says Estrada was being taken to a hospital. I hope they gave a ticket to the people driving behind who were videoing. Video, it was a passenger. It, it was oh, a passenger, oh, passenger that was okay. videoing it. Yep. You're not one of those guys, are you, Patrick? What? That chastises people on Twitter for taking pictures behind the wheel. No, but whenever I uh, whenever I tweet as if I was doing this while I was driving, I always get chastised. God, I somebody. hate those do-gooders. But, oh, my but, God. But I only do it if I'm stopped or pulled over. Right. Or you're on a gravel road in the woods. Yeah, or a gravel <laughs> road in the woods, stuck there, not moving. But I it, can, then I can complain. It always happens, even if it's obvious that the photo's yeah. been taken by your passenger. Some do-gooder waves oh, yeah. in. A homeless man in Mountain View, California, is reportedly sifting through hundreds of job offers mere days after passing out his resume alongside a highway. Wearing a suit and tie on Friday, 26-year-old David Sarez excuse me, held up a sign at a median that read, Homeless, hungry for success, take a resume. He says, this is my make it or break it moment. He said of what inspired his bold move, I have to do something crazy. He graduated with a degree in management information systems from Texas A&M University. Uh, That's a BS degree. (laughs) Where does a General Motors web developer in Austin? How can he not get a job? They're begging people. They're pleading people to take a job. Is he really homeless or is he just between apartments? Well, Mm -hmm. get this. Come on. He moved to California in hopes of creating a startup. Well, he lost all of his money and the vehicle that he was (laughs) living. Startups are stupid. Yeah. (laughs) They don't work. This guy ain't homeless. No. Next story. This He's guy's been living a loser. in a park. We ever certainly since. dismissed this Big poor deal. Deal. <laughs> Some parks are, you know, pretty nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Especially California, in California. Anyway. Right. I'll oh, sleep in the bathroom floor, not. pal. Yeah. Police in Canada cited a driver. Have you guys seen this? This is a viral photo. Police in Canada cited a driver who was spotted traveling with multiple large wooden planks sticking out from both windows on their vehicle. I love these guys. A photo these tweeted guys. by the Peel Regional Police Boards. shows a, Police shows a car with a wooden plank sticking out of the driver's side window 
and the passenger side window. <laughs> Have you ever seen it, Such, where oh, sure. a board is hanging out the passenger window, <laughs> yep. goes all the way through the car, yep. out the hatchback <laughs> window? Yep. That's like, I, I got to applaud for that crowd. You guys are awesome. Just on my way home from Interstate Lumber. <laughs> That's so awesome. Uh, the driver was issued a $123 fine for an insecure load. You know, Little Fold of Minnesota, when I was growing up, had two lumber yards. Really? Why were lumber yards so popular? That's One, we would Because there were no a... big box retail. Right? Yeah, I guess so. That's it. And they're still way better to go to than uh, big, big box retail. can't beat a good lumber yard. Oh, my God. I love good. going to lumber great. yards. The odor of the You're going to build a dog great. box. You want to go to the and lumber yard. <laughs> and it's not the old days. <laughs> it, it's not... <laughs> When I was a kid in the seventies, you had to know your bleep if you were going into a lumber yard. Now, if you can just be a dummy and go in, and they'll yeah. cater to you, it's awesome. Hey, Rook, you know what? Yeah, that should have been my startup before we even knew what startups were not. The dog box. Yes, the dog takes it with him on a walk, mm-hmm. and if it starts <laughs> raining, it moves right inside. <laughs> it's fantastic. You got to put little wheels on it. <laughs> <laughs> but if we're gonna if we're gonna break that down. Where where did you here's what I where did you get the wood? How did you know what (laughs) to go get? Here's the next time I wouldn't have a flat really bad dog. dog. The next time I wouldn't have a flat (laughs) roof. You're gonna put a peak on it? A flat? No, no. In other words, it was a box. It was a box. box. (laughs) No self-respecting dog in the world wants to live in just a box. It's the last thing I ever attempted to build. (laughs) As for the the (laughs) lumber. Forty years ago. As for the, the lumber, look, yeah. you didn't go buy the lumber. You just picked out lumber that was laying around. Run into the, hey, run into the garage, Jimmy, and grab a see uh, what you can find. It was plywood. Yeah. <laughs> Did you reinforce it with two by fours? It's from the or? basement. Yeah, well, <laughs> the dog started running down the street, dragging the box. <laughs> Roof, roof, roof. How did you nail the four sides of the box together? I have no idea. Yeah, I guarantee you there was no structural support <laughs> no. there. No. It's just plywood. I nailed the plywood. <laughs> yes. And that hatchet. split every time he drove a nail in. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so he drove another no, nail. Were, I remember there were a couple of posts that were thicker. But oh, I thick posts. Oh, okay. thick oh, you got the posts. The 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 there was some nails. As far as the door was concerned, yeah. the door was just the front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we have the nails? Uh, my favorite story. them over so that dog yeah. didn't <laughs> right, lose right. an eye. You know? <laughs> We're going to head to Florida now. Oh, God. <laughs> my favorite story of the day, Patrick. This one's right up your alley. Oh, Robbie God. Stratton's beer run may turn out to be more costly than a 18-pack of Bush Light, which was the target of the initial purchase. He br- light. He bought an al- brought an alligator, excuse me, into a Jacksonville convenience <laughs> store to help him with his purchase. Now the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is investigating the incident. Quote, they told me what I did was stupid and I'll be facing charges here soon and probably go to jail. Probably not. We'll see, Stratton said. The local television station posted two videos, first of Stratton and a group of men a- after the gator, which appeared to be four to five feet in length, and it was captured. One of the men stepped in the alligator's snout, then grabbed it by the neck, <laughs> held it aloft, and screamed, Florida State, baby! Florida State! <laughs> wow. Wow. Jeez. They might have been over the legal limit, these guys. Bingo. Uh, in the next video, Stratton is running around the aisles of the store, carrying the alligator, screaming, Y'all still got beer? Y'all ain't out, are you? <laughs> then adds, Go Gators, Go Gators, oh, Go! Man. Uh, it's unclear whether he meant reptiles or the Florida Gator football team. What is obvious is that Stratton had a bit to drink. When the local news asked him why he went shopping with an alligator, he replied, Alcohol, man. <laughs> at least he's honest. He was holding the gator and an 18-pack of Bush beer at the what same time. What town was this? It this had to be in-state, right? Jacksonville, Florida. Ooh, wow. Jacksonville, Florida. That's near the water. Was he, it a pet, or did they find it? I believe they found it, Joe. I do not mm-hmm. believe it But it's it a little a one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Four to five feet. Four five. Yeah. 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 They can kill it. Five-footer. Yeah. He could now face $5,000 in fines and up to five years in jail. <laughs> Well, there's yeah, okay. Plenty so out there. Now my I, neighbors. We <laughs> heard off you the can air. Sell them the condo uh, since you're done with the twins. <laughs> that story reminds me. Now John is actually going to be back on Wednesday, right? <laughs> yes, he is. Okay, Kenny. Wednesday. Thank that was you. a good story. Thank there's you, nothing Patrick. Nothing wrong with that story. Thank we'll you, Patrick. <laughs> Some 
Someday you're going to have to tell us the gardening story on the air. Oh, yeah. Me and the... Me and the rototiller trying Rented to make a rototiller. A Damn near killed him. <laughs> Come on. Make a garter. You gotta, fact, it has to be on video. The fact I still have all my digits is a, a miracle. It's a miracle <laughs> of our time. That thing, of the, it'll have a, a mind of its own if you don't know what you're doing. I was saying uh, that, uh, I was telling Joe that certainly alcohol had something to do with the uh, dissolution of my first marriage, but uh, my my alcohol, but, but the garden... That was it. The garden, the, the maintenance of the garden had quite a bit to do with it, too, because <laughs> I didn't have the good attitude about helping out with the ah, garden. Ah, I see. Especially you, when you can go to the grocery store and get the same stuff. Right? Uh, you know, rather why, than growing tomatoes for six yeah. months, yeah. you just, let's yeah. go get yeah. some. Yeah, I'll go get you. You know, you get them right there. They're on the vine. It's, <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. Anyway, oh. yeah, that was, I remember, mm, mm, I Took me a week. The garden was the size of this place when I got done killing. It, it you know, looked like you better a tell me quickly what you got coming looked up. Looked like a chair. Ah, it's uh, we got collar from Winter Park and we got Red Bollinger from Target Field and all kinds of other good stuff. And Manny's four deep thoughts to start the uh, kick off the show. Fifteen hundred ESPN is KSTP St. Paul Minneapolis. It's eighty five, and uh, the master carpenter and gardener will be 